Hello and welcome to another episode of Zeno's Life. Today we have Afreen with us with another IGCSE biology topic. Over to you, Afreen. Hello, everyone. So today we're looking at IGCSE biology chapter 13. It, it concerns excretion. It's concerned with excretion in human. So let's look at the um, syllabus for the first part of it. You need to know some of the toxic, uh, toxic stuff that's um, removed from a body every now and then. And then you learn about some of the processes that's involved in it, the organs, the, the, the system, the various systems involved in it. And the, that's pretty much it. It's not a very long topic, quite straightforward actually. So first of all, like I said, you need to look at the toxic substances. So number one, you've got carbon dioxide. These are created during respiration. It's one of the byproducts of respiration and it's excreted through the lungs. <clears throat> like we've already discussed in a previous chapter. And then there's urea and excess water and ions. Now, be, uh, do be mindful about the fact that water and ions are not toxic. However, they're in excess, so our body still needs to get rid of them. And urea is toxic, so that's why our body is getting rid of them. And all of these things, the kidneys is concerned with, the, concerned with them. So what is excretion? Excretion, if you remember, is one of the seven characteristics of living organisms and the definition is the it, it's the removal of organisms removal from organisms of toxic materials and waste products of metabolism so that that's like i said carbon dioxide and stuff and substances in excess of requirement so this is something you'll have to memorize um i personally haven't seen a question about this but you never know but yeah, this could be for once again, one or two marks. And yeah, like I said, things that are harmful for you, things that are byproducts of met metabolism that you don't need, things that are in excess, all these stuff are excreted from your body. And there are various organs and systems that are concerned with that. So first of all, of course, you've got, we've already discussed the how the lung excretes carbon dioxide. So that's not going to be a focus in this chapter. Over here, we'll mainly look at the kidneys and the different parts associated with it. So the function of the kidney is to remove urea and excess water and the reabsorption of glucose and some salts. So um, a very important uh, fact is that healthy human beings do not excrete glucose uh, with their urine but a person with diabetes would. That's one of the way you test someone for diabetes. So that's why when the blood is filtered in the kidneys, the first step of it, glucose is felt filtered into the urine. However, there's a process where the urine is refiltered. So some of the ions, sodium, potassium, those ions, and then the glucose and some of the extra, some of the water, they're all reabsorbed back into your blood so that your urine has absolutely no glucose in it. So let's look at the parts of the kidney. The If you look here, uh, it, the cortex is the outer part of the kidney and it contains the Bowman's capsules and coil tubules. If you don't understand these terms, don't be worried. These are all part of the nephron that we will look in the coming, we will look at it in the coming slides. Then you've got the ureter ureter is basically the pipe that connects your kidneys to your bladder and you know where the urine is filtered and is transported to the bladder medulla is the center part the the, the layer after the cortex and it contains loops of henley and the collecting ducts and then there's the urethra urethra is the wire it's the pipe that carry that transports urine from your bladder to outside of your body so that's basically the final passage way. So yeah, it carries urine from the bladder to the outside. That's the urethra. And then there's the bladder. Obviously, it's the urine storage facility. That's where the urine is stored. And then there's renal capsule. Renal capsule filters uh, from blood, the, the water, the glucose, urea, and the salts. Salts, once again, it just means ions. So if you see ions, if you see salts, don't get confused with that. Essentially the same thing. And then renal artery it brings waste and water from the blood so um renal artery and renal vein is kind of look think back to the transport in mammals chapter chapter 
artery would bring blood to the kidney, vein would carry blood away from the kidney. So that's what's happening here. Our renal artery brings waste and excess water in the blood to the kidneys and renal vein um, carries the filtered bl blood away from the kidneys. So all the waste and excess water is, uh, it remains in the kidney and the filtered blood is transported back to the heart where it's, you know, the whole process just repeats again. Okay, so this part is important. All parts are important, but this one's usually, this is where the questions come from for this chapter. This is nephrons. Nephrons, now over here is where all the filtering, reabsorption, and the, the loops of Henleys, the collecting ducts, the Bowman's capsule, all the stuff you've been seeing so far, this is where we discuss it. So collecting duct is basically the point, um, if you'll see here, there's the there's that U-shaped part of the nephron that's known as the collecting duct. And this is the part where water is reabsorbed into the blood so that, you know, according to the equilibrium of the blood and the urine. So if your blood needs more water, the more water is reabsorbed here. However, if the, the if excess water is not needed, this what this excess water is just excreted via the bladder and the, the urethra so this is where yeah so this is where reabsorption happens and this is important because this is also where glucose is reabsorbed then you've got loop of henley look at the same region that's where the loop of henry henley is and this is the part where water and solutes are uh, absorbed selectively absorbed so unless your blood needs it it's not absorbed okay so that's very important how is that happening it's happening through diffusion there's a diffusion gradient, and if, if it's not balanced, if there's an imbalance, that then the ions will just flow, okay? So there's nothing mechanically happening there. No energy is needed here. It's a passive process. Then you've got the tubule. So there's uh, two th different types of tubule, the proximal and the distal. However, you don't need to know the different types of tubule. You just have to know this is the tubules are where the glucose is absorbed reabsorbed some of the water is reabsorbed salts are reabsorbed and this basically increases the concentration of urea in the urine okay so ultimately the goal is to get rid of as much urea as possible right and along with that um water and salts are also lost so here are some of the functions of the nephron number one there's ultra filtration the this happens in the glomerulus now look here that's the first um, part that you'll see. It's this red capillary-like thing. It is a capillary, right? And so the blood enters the glomerulus via the renal artery, and then water, salt, glucose are forced into the Bowman's capsule. The Bowman's capsule is the capillary where filtration happens, and the parts of the blood which are too large to be filtered in, like blood cells and larger proteins, they are not filtered because simply because of their size. The next part of it, the proximal tubule, not just the proximal tubule, just the tubules. You don't need to know the specific tubules that are needed. Over here, the salt, water, and glucose are reabsorbed. It's moved out of the nephron by active transport. Now, this is the part where energy is needed. It's not a passive process. It's an active process, right? So these substances are reabsorbed back to the blood capillary. It's basically what I've been saying all this time. And then loop of Henle. This is the part where water is reabsorbed, but not salts, not ions. Water is drawn out of the filtrate in the nephron by osmosis. So if you think back to a previous chapter, osmosis is basically diffusion, but for water. And this is happening because of the difference in water potential gradients. And yeah, basic. that's basically it for it. And then loop of Henley is here again. Okay, just ignore that bit. Look at number five. That's the collecting duct. Whatever's remaining in the urine, it's moved through the second tubule into the collecting duct. And over here, some of the water is reabsorbed, but um, that it's it doesn't happen always. So water is permeable here, but also, once again, depends on the water potential gradient and through the collecting duct it's moved to the ureter that's the, the uh, that's outside of the nephron it's in the kidney 
and then it's the urine is transported to the bladder for storage. How is urea formed? Well, th this is um, it's a process known as deamination. So urea is formed in the liver from excess amino acids. Amino acids. Urea is basically the removal of nitrogen containing parts of amino acids to form urea. Am amino acids have nitrogen containing parts and a carbon containing part. The carbon containing part is um, used for storage for energy and the nitrogen containing part is transformed into urea because it's a, a safer way of storing this. However, it's not safe for long periods of times, which is why it needs to be excreted via the uh, urethra, urethra. And another important point, alcohols, drugs, and hormones are all broken down in the liver. Uh, this is, that's why you will sometimes see these excess stuff in your urine as well, okay? And yeah, that's basically it for that part. Now let's look at some questions. This is February, March, 2016. The diagram shows the structure of a kidney tubule. Where does filtration occur? So if you remember, this is known as ultrafiltration, and it happens in the Bowman's capsule. That is option A. This is May, June 2016. Which diet will cause the liver to produce the most urea? Most urea, once again, urea is the removal of uh, urea basically comes from a process where the nitrogen nitrogen containing parts of amino acids are removed, right? Amona, uh, amino acids means proteins. So that's going to be a high protein diet. So it's not A, it's not B, it's not C, it is D, like they said, high protein. Low carbohydrate doesn't really play into this, but then no other option has high protein. So D is the most viable option. And that is the correct answer. And that is it for this chapter. Thank you so much, Afreen, for your time. And the both of us hope this video was informative. Thank you and see you next week.